Hello everyone, my name is Nick Lyle. I'm the lead trainer at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. And uh, in this quick start tutorial, I'll show you how to set up FreakC for use with your AquaChem projects. Uh, so this tutorial is not a tutorial on geochemical modeling. It's not even really a tutorial on FreakC. It's a tutorial strictly to uh, get you set up and have FreakC working on your projects. So uh, to use FreakC in AquaChem, there are three essential steps. The first step is to point AquaChem to freakc.exe. So, of course, this is the executable file that AquaChem actually uses uh, to run FreakC models. Uh, this is downloaded from the US Geological Service website. The second step would be to, uh, in AquaChem, for your project, select a thermodynamic database to use with that project. And this third step is to import database parameters uh, in your project uh, so that they can be used for modeling. This will make sense later, but at, at any rate, this first step uh, is done once for installation of AquaChem, whereas these last two steps are done on every project. So I'll get AquaChem open, and I'll get started on the first step, which is pointing AquaChem to freakc.exe. To do that, I'll press this project button here in the upper left, and I'll find the AquaChem settings. So these are the program-wide settings, and I'll find FreakC. Uh, now, if I didn't have FreakC downloaded, I could press this FreakC website button, and uh, I'll be brought to this website. So the file that you must have uh, in order to run FreakC would be this batch version of FreakC. So you probably want the Windows 64-bit here. Uh, however, to use the FreakC iGUI, you would also need to download uh, the appropriate file. So by default, this FreakC executable is uh, at uh, under uh, Program Files, USGS, and you'll have this FreakC folder, and then in the bin and release, you'll find FreakC.exe. And for the FreakC iGUI, uh, this is by default in Program Files x86, find USGS, FreakC Interactive, bin FreakCi.exe. And now I'll hit OK, and that step is done. Now that we've pointed AquaChem uh, to the location of the FreakC exe, the next step to setting up FreakC for this project is to select at least one thermodynamic database. Uh, as I said, this is supposed to be a short uh, quick start guide. Um, I don't really have the time to get into uh, the nuances of what these thermodynamic databases are, but quickly in a nutshell, uh, they're files that define different um, species, different elements, uh, different equilibrium reactions. Uh, they provide parameters, say, for like the calculation of activity coefficients. They provide parameters for things like uh, dissolution and precipitation reactions. Uh, and so you can imagine that uh, these things are essential for running the FreakC model. So to actually select a database to use with AquaChem, uh, you would press the project button right here, scroll down to properties, and select the FreakC um, I guess, menu in the project properties window. As you can see, we don't have any databases currently associated with this project. Uh, in order to do so, we would just select this import database button. Now, by default, uh, FreakC installs with about a dozen different databases. The actual considerations for which database that you'd want to use, uh, again, are beyond the scope of this video, but there are uh, resources uh, for example, the FreakC documentation, or even a couple papers uh, discussing some considerations that exist for selecting which one of these databases to use when modeling with FreakC. Uh, at any rate, for this project, I'm just going to select FreakC.bat, and I'll hit open. And once I've imported this, you can see that AquaChem has read, um, read out different uh, elements and master species uh, from this FreakC database file, but uh, it needs to associate these species to uh, project parameters. So, for example, this calcium here, uh, I could manually assign it to calcium in the database. So, 
uh, I could just select calcium here. Uh, or uh, optionally, uh, I'd, I'd, another thing I could do, and probably a good first step, is to press this auto map parameters button. And by doing that, uh, AquaChem will uh, attempt to automatically map these parameters. Uh, as always, it's a good idea to take a look at these uh, auto mappings and just to verify that they're done correctly and they're also comprehensive. So for example here, iron two, uh, it was not actually uh, associated with iron two in this database, even though we've got data for it. So uh, I'll just select it, select Fe2 plus this, and now that's been associated. So I save uh, a database by pressing the save button here. And I can actually have more than one database associated with a project. So if I want to use uh, another database for modeling, I'd select the import button again, and I'd select some other database. So I'll do the Mintech V4. I'll open it, and I can do the same process of mapping parameters and saving it. And if I want to make this default database, I'd just press the Make Default button right here. And uh, if it's the default, then it would be the database that would be used uh, when doing the, uh, the one button modeling. So the final step is to import modeled frequency parameters uh, into the database as uh, project parameters. Uh, so this step is optional technically. Uh, however, if you don't do it, you won't be able to do one click modeling. So if you want to be able to calculate saturation indices or um, activities, or get percent errors from frequency, you'll need to, to do this. Um, so uh, in order to, to uh, import these parameters, I'll go to the parameter editor, which is this button right here. I'll get this warning. And I'll go to the parameter group modeled. So if you're on the parameter group modeled, and only if you're on the parameter group modeled, uh, and you press this button here, you can import uh, parameters from your thermodynamic database. So if you press it, um, you can see that uh, you got all these options for the different activities, saturation indices, and so on. Uh, for this project, I think I'll leave out the activities and I'll just import all the saturation indices. And I'll also import these other parameters. In fact, uh, I'll just import uh, alkalinity and percent error. And now I'll click close. The project will reload. And now if I click on a sample and I press this Calculate Saturation Indices and Activities button, AquaChem will do just that. It'll use FreeC to uh, calculate saturation indices, alkalinity percent error, all these different parameters that I imported. Uh, and it's now able to save these results and associate them with the sample. So now FreeC is uh, essentially set up for this project. Um, there's a couple other functionalities. So I just showed the one button uh, calculation saturation indices. Uh, but if I want to do that for multiple samples at once, I could do that by selecting samples, modeling, calculate saturation indices and activities, which would open uh, this window where I could uh, either do this for the selected samples or use it for some sample set. So if I wanted to calculate all the saturation activities or saturation indices and activities for an entire database, that would be how I'd do it. Um, you can also set up basic simulations. So again, uh, in a later video, I will give a demo on how to actually use this, but I don't want to make this video too long. But to access that, you would go to uh, Samples, Modeling, Frequency Basic, and that will open up this lightweight user interface where you're able to add samples from your uh, database and uh, perform different uh, functions on them and also re-import the results. Again, I'll talk about this in a separate video. And finally, I just wanted to show off the send samples to Freak CI. So if you want to uh, use more FreakSeed's functionality, you can do that in Freak CI by pressing this button. Uh, you can select some samples or use the active sample set. And once you hit OK, Freak CI will open up with your imported sample and you're able to uh, use all the different functionalities of Freak CI on them. And that's kind of the entire video. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you learned something.